What's quaking people? Counter to Quake here coming at you with my reaction slash review of season two, episodes nine and ten of Kimetsu no Yaiba or Demon Slayer. Need a little more of the count in your life? You can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. You can come hang out in the Discord server. You can listen to the podcast Nerd Base wherever you can find podcasts. I also stream on Twitch every Sunday at noon PST. And I'm even writing an anime-inspired novel, which you can read on Wattpad as the chapters are released. Links to all of this are down in the description. And of course, if you want to support the channel, the best way is to simply like, comment, subscribe if you haven't, and ring the notification bell for more otaku and nerd culture content. All right, reaction slash review. That's new. Here's what happened. This is kind of born out of necessity. Long story short, the way I record my Switch games is I plug my Switch directly into my mixer to record the sound because I don't have a capture card that can record sound. It only records video. So that means that both the Switch audio and my microphone audio enters the computer through the same interface and on the same track. So I have to keep the Switch volume low and basically have it on the same track as my audio commentary and just kind of make sure that the levels are fine before I record. That's all fine when I play Pokemon. The issue is the last time I recorded Pokemon, I docked my Switch and didn't turn it off. So I recorded my reactions with Pokemon music playing the entire time that I couldn't hear because it was only playing through the mixer. So the entire reaction of Demon Slayer has Pokemon music going through it. And let's just say it's really chipper, happy, go lucky Pokemon music that doesn't fit Demon Slayer. It's not too loud when I'm playing the game because it obviously fits with the game, but when I'm playing it over an anime, it's distractingly loud. So I came up with the idea of, well, why don't I just review the episodes and splice in reaction clips of, you know, key moments. That way it limits the amount of time that I have to have that weird Pokemon music playing over the video. Cause I guarantee you a 25 minute reaction video with random happy as shit Pokemon music playing over it is gonna get really annoying very quickly. That being said, this is actually quite a very interesting development for me because if this goes well, this may be my preferred method of doing these reactions in the future because what some of you may not realize is that the videos that take the absolute longest for me to edit by a huge margin are the anime reactions because I have to take like a 21 or 22 minute video and with two videos that makes it about 45, 46, 50 minute videos sometimes and cut them down to just 10 minutes per episode of footage. That takes a long time. And even when I do that, I often still get robo claims from YouTube and have to take it down, re-edit it, re-render it and then re-upload it. And there are times when I have to do that more than once for one video. That gets really exhausting, very time consuming. And with the amount of animes that I've already dedicated myself to, and I'm gonna stick to it, it gets really hard to keep up sometimes. So if this works out and it's easier one for me to edit and two, much less likely that I get claims, this may be the best route to take. So this is gonna sort of be our little test run of this experiment. You know, you guys let me know what you think of this new method, the weird Pokemon music aside, obviously. And uh, we'll see if this is the way we want to do it going forward. Now, a lot of you probably remember that I just posted a poll in my community tab asking you what content you watch me for the most. And some of you are probably thinking, okay, well, he's trying to find content slash. That's not it at all. I just want to know how many of you watch what, because I'm putting a lot of effort, the majority of my effort into anime reactions. And while it's not the least supported content on the channel, it's not the most supported. The most supported obviously are the nerdcore reactions. So while the anime reactions aren't the most supported, I enjoy doing them and I don't want to quit because I know there are a lot of you who really like them. I know there are some of you who subbed for them and I don't want to exclude you just because you're a minority. So let me know what you think. I would love everybody's feedback. I want to know truly how you feel about this. Like I said, this is an experiment. We'll see how this goes. So episode nine picks up right where we left off where Inosuke, Tanjiro, and Zenitsu all volunteered for Tengen's little mission. <laughs> Zenitsu is trying to delicately explain to Tanjiro what the entertainment district is. And Tengen is, let's say, establishing his dominance. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> the god of flashiness, I love it. <laughs> and of course, Tanjiro and Inosuke are both playing the overly literal, overly gullible fish out of water character because both of them grew up a little isolated away from society. Inosuke obviously more than Tanjiro. Now the opening song to this arc is awesome. But with the Pokemon music over it, it is a horrifying. Oh my gosh, going back to edit this was painful to my ears. Ah!
This needs to stop now. Now this song is good, but it's the third opening for Demon Slayer we've had so far, and I'm gonna say, Gurenge still takes it, all right? Lisa still takes it with that very first one, the very first season. It's still my favorite anime opening of all time. I just love that song. It's just, I don't know, the way it's written, <sighs> just touches me. So Tengen takes them to the entertainment district and it's nighttime and bustling because obviously nighttime is when this district comes to life. He tells them not to leave the cart and they immediately do. Already. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> This district is overwhelming for all three of them. So Tengen explains that women are basically sold into prostitution here because of debt for the most part. And they're given sort of lodging and a place to stay where they basically, you know, work as a prostitute. And if they can climb up the ranks, a rich man might buy them out of their contract. Now the highest ranking of these women are called the Oidon, and they're basically the most desirable and beautiful, but they've also mastered like skills and arts and things like that. So they're basically the top tier of the women basically in servitude here. These women are basically the breadwinners of their houses. So they make their way to this inn that has the wisteria kanji on the front, meaning it's basically a safe haven for demon slayers. There, Tengen explains to them that they need to keep a low profile and that they're looking for his wife. Zenitsu thinks they're looking for a wife for him, and then doesn't believe him when he says that, no, it's his actual wife that has infiltrated the district. <laughs> Oh yeah, and he's got three. <laughs> this is hilarious. Uh, every anime needs a simp. So Tengen has stopped receiving communication from all three of his wives. So the boys are going to look for them in the three houses that Tengen has narrowed down as their likely location. <laughs> Let's just say the boys aren't exactly the most convincing girls. But Tengen turns on his charm and Tanjiro gets a job. <laughs> I can't. I can't. I can't. So as the rest of them move on, they actually see a group of people gathering around one of the Oidon. They get to see firsthand kind of how elegant and how high of a status she actually has, you know. But then somebody from the house quickly takes interest in Inosuke and Inosuke gets a job. That's one thing I was wondering because Inosuke has a very beautiful face. They mentioned the first time they see him without the boar head on that he actually has very feminine features, like beautiful features. So the makeup was actually kind of hindering that, you know, it was hiding how beautiful he actually naturally is. And then poor Zenitsu is the only one left. <laughs> <laughs> so Tengen takes Zenichi to the last house and he uses his thunder breathing to establish some pretty awesome shamisen playing skills. Oh, okay. You gonna break something? <laughs> I didn't realize how much I needed Zenitsu just rocking hard on the Shamisen. It, I needed that in my life. Doesn't sound as good with Pokemon music over it though. Meanwhile, Tanjiro is really impressing his house with how great a worker he is. While there, he overhears a couple of the girls talking about one of the other house's madams who fell from a window and died. And they say that a lot of the older girls are leaving committing Ashinuke, which is basically deserting for prostitutes. Then as an example, the girls mention one of Tengen's wives by name, which catches Tanjiro's ear until the Oidon comes in and silences them. But she gives Tanjiro delicious looking candy, so it's okay. But keeping true to his rock hard head, Tanjiro flat out asked the Oiron if she actually did commit Ashnike. She just said stop spreading those rumors, so she's gonna say it didn't happen. Then we get to one of the funniest scenes that I've seen so far in this season. Tanjiro, as honest as he is, trying really, really hard to lie. <laughs> is your what? What are you gonna say? What are you gonna say? Why was that? Oh! <laughs> you can't lie! And 
they believe him. It's definitely main character plot armor. I mean, let's call a spade a spade here. So the Oidon basically admits that she didn't think she would do it either, but they found her diary, and in her diary, she had written about wanting to commit Ashinike. So Tanjiro quickly realizes that this is probably forged by the demon because when people disappear from this district, they're just gonna assume they ran off. I mean, it's really not all that strange. So we cut the Tengen who's uh, sitting on a roof by himself, feeling very, very uneasy, wondering to himself if the demon here is in fact an upper rank demon, which, I mean, probably. <laughs> so while this is going on, Inosuke is wandering around his house and he overhears some gossip about Tengen's wife, people wondering if she's okay because he's been locked away in her room. It's a little suspicious to me. So Inosuke goes to check it out himself and the women see him and basically say, hey, don't run, you're gonna hurt yourself. And he doesn't respond, he just kind of quietly nods timidly. And they comment on how quiet he is and then we realize that Tengen told him not to talk because his voice is way too deep in butch. <laughs> <laughs> that is hilarious. So then we see the interior shot of Tengen's wife's room. Makia was her name. And I sort of gawk at the animation because the animation looks really, really cool. I don't even realize what's actually happening in the scene. Dude, look at this. Look at this animation right here. Uh oh. So Inosuke immediately senses what's going on and walks up to the room. That's where the episode ends off. That's actually a really suspenseful ending. It was really, really cool. So it looks like this demon has the ability to like control fabric or something. She's like tying Makio up with these like beautiful like ribbons basically. And there's like a disembodied mouth that's speaking. I'm not really sure if that's her actually projecting herself through the ribbons or if it's just a depiction of her speaking telepathically to her. I'm not really sure at this point what that is, but she's definitely controlling controlling those ribbons. It's gotta be some sort of like demon blood magic thing. This episode was really, really cool. It was like an introduction to this new arc, really. The last episode really was kind of the closure of the Mugen Train arc. This was like the true introduction to the Entertainment District arc. There was a whole lot of comic relief with the boys like trying to be passed off as girls. It was really, really funny. And I think it's also pretty cool that the three of them all got accepted in different places based on different quirks they had. Like the one woman could tell that Inosuke had a really beautiful face under all the makeup. The other woman for Tanjiro could tell that he was very, very obedient by the way he was carrying himself, I guess. And then Zenitsu just displayed all that talent and like the audacity to sort of like stick it to the man kind of because he was so angry at Tengen. That was really, really funny too. So this was cool, but now the end of the episode looks like we're actually start getting into the nitty gritty gritty of this, like the demon part of this, why we're actually here. So episode 10 starts off with a flashback of a woman basically calling out who I'm assuming is the demon about all the women that have been disappearing lately. <laughs> Wouldn't talk to a demon like that. Woman goes in, they close the door. A few minutes later, the demon walks out by herself. So I guess we can add her to the list of missing women. We then cut to Zenitsu, who is the only one who hasn't heard anything about Tengen's wife. We then learn that the madam who fell from the window that the girls were talking to Tanjiro about the last episode was the madam of Zenitsu's house. And then suddenly, through all the cacophony of the women just talking about their daily tasks in the house, Zenitsu hears a woman crying. Uh-oh. And this is one of the coolest moments he's got because underneath all of the cowardice and the simping, Zenitsu is actually a really cool character. You just have to pick through all those layers of very unlikable character traits. We then cut to where we left off with Inosuke walking towards Makio's room and he does not know what he's walking into. This part makes me super anxious and nervous because I mean, he's basically walking into what's probably an upper ranked demon. Oh God, that looks delicious. He sees the food by the door and deduces that that's her door because the women were talking about how they left her food by the door because she's not feeling well. And he has this weird, like slimy, uneasy feeling because something's not right. And then this is the first time I've actually personally realized that while Tanjiro has a super smell and Zenitsu has a super hearing, Inosuke has like a super animalistic sixth sense, which I'm sure once I think about it, it's actually pretty obvious in the last season and what's happened until now. But this is the first time I've actually fully noticed that he actually has a super sense just like the other two. This is his power. It's really, really cool. So he quickly works up that animalistic bravado and rushes to the door and throws it open. That's right. But it's empty. Nobody's inside. So he quickly notices something happening in the roof or in the attic. So he chases it. He's running down the hall. He's running, running, running. Then he thinks he catches up to it. So he tries to attack. 
Uh oh. <laughs> it wasn't the demon. But it was the demon he was tracking. It was just kind of escaping through the walls. I think it's using some sort of like demon blood magic, like traveling through those ribbons. It's really, really interesting. I'm actually very curious how that works. Because if the demon is in Inosuke's house, but is also responsible for the death a couple days ago at Zenitsu's house, that means it's traveling between the houses. And I think this is how it's doing it. It's using this weird like ribbon thing that it does. So we catch back up with Zenitsu who finds the source of the crying. It's a little girl locked in a room by herself and she's crying. I don't like seeing children cry. Crying. Calm down, dude. Don't yell at her. So Zenitsu at first is like freaked out and he starts kind of yelling like, what's wrong? Are you okay? And he freaks her out a little more. And then he quickly downshifts into like comforting mode. Like, what's wrong? You know, what's going on with you? And then like a straight chill runs through his back. Uh-oh. What do you got contacts on? Why don't your eyes have numbers in them? This is clearly the demon. So if the demon's now at Zenitsu's house and it was just at Inosuke's house, that's odd. Or maybe it was like projecting itself because all we saw was that embodied mouth. So it might've just been projecting itself to the other house like through that blood demon magic. I'm still not sure, but it's really interesting. So he's like shaking and terrified and he realizes quickly that this is an upper rank demon. So it turns out the demon is the Oidon of this house and the other little girls are just terrified of her. But they try to stand up for Zenitsu to because this demon is like why are you in my room why aren't you listening to me and it's like terrified he can't speak he can't move this scene is tense it is intense it is tense it is bone chilling but this stupid pokemon music ruins all of it <laughs> He's not even trying to have a higher voice that's so rude come on that's mean i'm not sure why i expected a demon to be nice Oh no! Not the poor little girl! No, stop it! Oh, get her! That's right! He's not even asleep! I love Zenitsu right now so much! We then switch to Tanjiro, who's basically being Cinderella. <laughs> Tanjiro's a good maid. There's gotta be such thing as too diligent, right? Tanjiro is that main character that has like the Superman or Captain America quality, where it's like, you really gotta hit the nail on the head there. Cause they can be really boy scouty and not really be relatable or compelling for the audience. So I think the way they pull it off with Tanjiro is that they go so far that it's comical. You know, it's funny. They let you laugh at it. So it makes it fun and less sickening. So we cut back to Inosuke and the ladies are pissed because he's like smashing up the house. Oh man. <laughs> she shook so he is like completely out of character now he is just looking for this demon this is hilarious so we jump back to zenitsu who is encountering this demon and defending this little girl so he's standing his ground he has got a backbone right now i'm loving the side of zenitsu he won't back down he's protecting her no stop hurting the girl zenitsu do something although i don't think you can take this demon on but this demon lays his ass out <laughs> I mean, he 
tried. So we jump back to the two day flashback of the madam of the house confronting the demon. Now in full color. So the madam tells a story about this old tea lady who told her that there was always this Oidon who had like the same type of name, the same type of twisted mannerisms. She would like cock her head and look at you with these piercing eyes when she was angry. And I think she's putting it together that this has been the same demon this entire time, just adopting different names to seem like she was a new person every so often. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't think so. Oh, that's right. They, they said that she... Oh. They said she jumped out the window or something. There we go. Upper six. Yeah, okay. That's not good. That's what she said. That's what she said. That's what she said. So the demon doesn't like getting called out, and she hauls her ass up into the sky over the town. And we find out that she's actually the upper six of the 12 moons. And she's a baddie, to be honest with you. I mean, obviously, that's the whole point of, like, her role right now. But when she's in full demon mode, ooh, my goodness. So we find out, and I'm sure you can guess what actually happened to the woman who fell out of the window. Oh god. So the demon slowly makes her get away and kind of sneaks into the dark room unnoticed. But daddy's up waiting for her. <laughs> Annie, are you okay? So Muzan says something really interesting here. He says that they can't tell the difference between different humans on sight, but they can tell the difference based on things like blood type and genes and disease, things that humans have no knowledge of, which is strange because this takes place like in the early 1900s and blood types were discovered in the very, very early 1900s, like the turn of the century. And the basics for genetics were discovered a few decades before that, I'm pretty sure. So it's very interesting that he's saying humans have no knowledge of these kind of things. I think I might be interpreting this incorrectly. So if you guys know, let me know what he's talking about. Another really interesting dynamic between Muzan and we now know her name is Daki is she was so menacing and badass, but before Muzan, she's like this quivering little timid girl. It's crazy. This like immediately shows the scope of power that Muzan holds. And we've already seen how powerful he is and how menacing and how feared he is, but this really hits at home. It really, really does. And then we get the bombshell. Wow. Seven Hashira? She has killed seven Hashira. I am so nervous for Zenitsu right now. So the guy who I'm assuming is the master of the house basically begs on his knees for Daki to spare him. He promises that he will reprimand him or her later, but they're about to open, so please don't beat the crap out of my new girl yet. Oh my god. Oh my god. Dude, that's so creepy. That turn on a dime is probably the most frightening thing I've seen of her this whole episode. Like, she can be really cruel and menacing and evil, but the fact that she can just switch it right off and become this like unassuming apologetic just dainty little flower that is scary that is super scary crazy is scarier than mean any day of the week <laughs> so Daki notices that even though he was passed out he still went on the defensive which is I mean that's Zenitsu for you but she quickly deduces that he is probably with the demon slayer core so I am super super concerned about Zenitsu at this point What just happened? What just happened? What just happened? This is what I was worried about. This is not fair. This is where I stopped this recording session. Okay, the entire episode is just a blur because of that last post credit scene. What just happened to Zenitsu? What happened? Is he okay? He's gotta be okay, but oh my God. He just got like swallowed up by this demon. And what happened to Tengen's wife? Is Tengen's wife okay? We don't know what happened with that. This arc really seems to be building momentum at a really nice clip. And one of the highlights, honestly, one of the highlights of this whole episode is Zenitsu having a backbone, man. I'm telling you, underneath all the undesirable personality traits like the simping and the cowardice, he's actually a really good, strong character. I really like him a lot. You just gotta peel back the layers of the onion, as Shrek would say. But, oh man, this was insane. I need to watch the next one. I cannot wait to watch the next one. guys. If you enjoyed this reaction slash review, 
Let me know what you thought of it. Obviously, I was kind of forced to do this because of the background music. But if this goes well, I may consider doing this for my anime reactions in the future. So let me know your thoughts. Do you think this is a cool way to do it? Do you not like it? Just tell me. Let me know. I will preface this by saying... I haven't even done the editing yet, but I can already tell you this is a lot less editing work for me. So there are benefits to me doing it this way, but let me know what you guys think. Anyway, guys, if you enjoy this, like, comment, subscribe if you feel so inclined. Follow me on all the social medias, join the Discord, check out the podcast, follow me on Twitch. Everything I do is down in the description. Come hang out. Until next time, guys, I've been Count Richard Quake, and I hope you...